It's a hard and dangerous job hauling lobster pots alone on the edge of the Atlantic. Francis Day's family have been fishing here for generations. It's always dangerous, especially in a boat like this, and only 19 feet, and on your own as well, because at the moment, it's very hard to pay a crew member. Do you know what I mean? The lobster price the lobsters are bad. They're scarce now. The place is nearly overfished. Well, as soon as you leave the harbour, you're taking a risk right away. Every day is a risk. I thought that I'd help out the lifeboat in some way, because you'd never know someday that I might need them. Francis is one of around 150 people who live on Inish Boffin, an island community that relies on the help of the RNLI. They come to church on a Saturday to join the visiting priest in prayers for the safekeeping of those who work on the sea. People see the need for the RNLI, I mean, because they have seen tragedy here over the years. And even like today, our celebration of Mass was for people who lost their life in uh, the Inish Shark uh, drowning of 1949. It's not a rich community, far from it. But on this Saturday, the islanders again dig deep to find money for the RNLI. Francis, his brother John and their mother Anne have collected for the charity for years. My cousin just phoned me up one day and asked me would I do lifeboat collection and she sent me in a little boat and uh, that's how it started 35 years ago when the children were young and uh, they collected with me then so it, I felt it was a good cause like because we, we don't know when we're going to need the help of the lifeboat. Today the ferry Discovery is half full with tourists and locals. They watch out for the rich wildlife which inhabits these waters. Good morning again, Clifton Coast Yard. We are en route from Clayton to Nishbuffin. For skipper With Pat Concannon, this is an easy trip, but he knows the RNLI crews can be counted on in an emergency. I always have a good, good relationship with them. We'd be glad to see them when we need them, obviously. Um, they're a great organisation and they're a great peace of mind to know that they're in the area. On Inishbuffin, Pat's wife Nicola and her four children are baking cakes to raise money for the RNLI. Nicola's father was a lifeboat man and it's become a family tradition to bake for fundraising raffles. Have the chocolate in. That's very good. We spend an awful lot of time on the sea and we're out in all kinds of weather and we bring the kids out in all kinds of weather. It brings it home to you really that you need to know that somebody is out there to come and get you if something does go wrong, God forbid. Today, Pat's helping the Clifton RNLI crews test their emergency response. It's all about being ready if the need arises. Exercise over, it's then back on standby. My dad has the pub here at Christmas. He sold the hampers and he sold Christmas cards every year. So um, I continued that on from him. One winter's evening we were in the bar and we just decided we'd do a fundraiser for the RNLI. Um, it's something that's very important to us living, to, and living on an island. It seemed kind of a logical thing to do to support something that hopefully we'll never need. Well, when we heard we had won the award, we were absolutely delighted. We were thrilled. We got quite a shock, but it was great. It was really, it was an honour for all of us involved, the whole community, us as well. The Islanders have raised more than 50,000 euro for the Clifton RNLI. Back at the island harbour, the local people have gathered to thank the RNLI for their support. And the crew had a chance to thank the Islanders for their generosity. That was a fantastic welcome, so it was, really, really was. I mean, they put so much, they put so much effort into fundraising, they've raised a lot of, lot of money, so it's really appreciated by all the crew, and then to be, to be given such a greeting, it makes, it makes everything worthwhile.